And we're back with some more baby mini base shenanigans. Uh, we just, uh, I, this is literally just taking up from where we uh, we dropped off last time. But uh, something that was pointed out in the comments was uh, yeah, the amount of food we've got has vanished quite a bit. It turns out that uh, accident that Mondo had earlier, it got into our food supply. Now all of our food has gone off. Um... That's a big problem. That's a really, really, really big problem we've got right now. Because if all our food goes off, our, our dupes will start starving. So we need to immediately get this mopped up. Uh, we need to do a bunch of maintenance here. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, it turns out having your food lying around and a bunch of, uh, you know, pee, not good. Just not good at all. Uh, next step, I think, is going to be bricking this whole thing in. Uh, we'll have to put all the food back in when we're done. Yeah, we'll have to break this up and hopefully save some of the food. We're going to dump some naphtha in here, considering it's a, a better liquid for this. Uh, we also are going to put all of the food right back in there the moment we get this done. We just want to seal that up, deconstruct that brick. Oh, vacuum. Vacuum to start. I can put in some chlorine later on. All right, we're almost back to normal. Almost. All we got to do is get all of that food back in there. Uh, should just be a case of setting this to sweep only, allow manual use, and there we go. Everything. Just... Get the lot in there, and let's make that a high priority, shall we? Get all that stuff out of there. That's, yeah, that's classified as a vacuum, so a vacuum is also, you know, good for storing food. They won't, they won't go off any further, but I would like to get some chlorine in there just to make sure that no germs happen. Oh, hey, there's some barbecue right there. What, what are you doing? Pick up the barbecue and put it in the storage. <laughs> almost. Okay, they've almost done it. That should save us a little bit more. Now, um, yes, there's a few things we need to do. One, I got rid of the oxalate maker. We don't need that anymore, I just realized, because, well, yes, all of our oxygen is going to be coming from this over here. I also disabled the oxygen going into there for a minute just because we had sort of a... Well, let's just say we were draining too much oxygen out of the rest of the base. The base was starting to look a little bit sparse. For example, you can see here these plants are starting to stifle because they're in hydrogen. Oh, well. Uh, and can people... Oh, yes, my dupes can get over here to trim these, but... I don't know exactly what level it's at, but once they hit a certain amount of scale growth, maybe it's 50%, maybe it's only 20%. Yeah, once they hit that uh, certain level of scale growth, they look like that one only has 45% scale growth. It looks like they've got full scales. It's just the way the game does it. I don't know why. Anyway, let's, uh, let's skip this forward while I sort out the last of the food and do a few bits of minor cleanup. Right, so, with all of that done, uh, I've decided there's a few pieces of maintenance that need to be taken care of. One, we can get rid of our oil refinery. The only reason we were refining oil was for petroleum for petroleum rockets. That's no longer necessary. We're going to be running hydrogen rockets from here on out. So we can get rid of all of these. Uh, you know, get rid of all of that as well. I think, yeah, I think what we'll do is we will put down a... Uh, a telescope in here, and we'll use a telescope to start examining some more of the planets. Uh, the reason being our star map is very incomplete, and I think we've got enough that we can, you know, while we're doing some modifications here and converting this over to hydrogen rockets, we might as well get some use out of it. All right, that there should allow us to start scanning the stars again, though we will have to start taking care of the regolith. Uh, swings and roundabouts, you got to do what you got to do to get this done. Now, uh, down here, hydrogen is slowly building up, uh, though so long as it's not backing up too much into the system. Uh, this is also not helping us. I've, I'm trying to drain all the hydrogen out of the top here, but at the same time, I'm also trying to make sure we get as much hydrogen out of here at the same time, and I don't want to waste any if I can avoid it. So at the same time, we're, we're, we're trying to make sure that that does not back up because that would cause us problems, and we don't want this to back up because we would also be wasting hydrogen. But it's slowly but surely eating through it. This is why you normally have two aqua tuners in your liquid oxygen and hydrogen production facilities, because it takes one aqua tuner just to keep up with the hydrogen. Just about, depending on how much you're throwing in. But I think once we get through the backlog, I think we will be fine. Now, there were some questions as to why we're running this stuff so hot. I mean, there's 500 degree hydrogen coming out of here. It's like, yeah, why not run that through a steam turbine and, and bleed off the heat and turn it into energy? And that would be great. It's just, there's no real way to fit it. We are so cramped on space. I mean, I could try breaking in down here and running it through there, but that's already running flat out. Here is, well, I would love to run it through there, but that's also kind of running flat. Well, not running flat out, but I'd have to break in and there's no real way to do it conveniently. So instead, we just dump it right in there and have to burn power getting rid of it. It's unfortunate, but it's just the way it's working out right now. Uh, but over here, there needs to be some modifications made. We have a whole bunch of methane there, and I'd like to sort of cramp this whole thing up really high. Uh, the reason being, we might want to stick in a steam turbine here to start absorbing steam out of this silo and help cooling it down. Th this silo is going to overheat, definitely. With the steam rocket in there, it definitely got hotter than 500 degrees. So this is going to start causing our liquid locks here to flash. 
So I think we're going to put in a steam turbine here to eat heat from the from the silo. But first, we've got to squash up all this natural gas. What we have done here is rather simple. We have crammed a gas pump. You know what? I'm putting some automation first. Uh, we've crammed a gas pump in here, and we've dumped in all of that methane. All of that methane that's been lying around, yep, we're going to dump it in there. And you know what? We will stick it in a temperature shift plate. Right about... Ooh, no, we don't need diamond. Nothing that fancy. Igneous rock will do plenty fine for our purposes. And we're going to try and siphon heat out of this steam room into here. Well, this rocket silo into here and help melt that. I've also left in a conveyor rail, just in case we ever pick up any more methane, methane along the way. It's, I mean, it might happen. You never know. We'll probably have to go back to this, those planets at some point. And we'll stick in... Oh, we're going to make this out of steel. Just in case it gets too hot in here. And we'll hook that up to the gas pump. So we can turn that on and off as needs be. Uh, how's our, uh, our telescope we're doing? Baby Yoda. Yeah, they're researching that nearest planet. Yeah, there's three planets here, and then we've got a bit of a gap until the next ones. But we should hopefully be able to get enough research to hammer out the last of the research on our tree, and then we can just demolish all the research building, giving ourselves even more space. Uh, you turn off. We don't want that gas pump activating just yet. All right, all of our uh, all of our natural gas is now stuck in here. That... Wait. Methane. Oh, the methane is there. It just seems to be behind. You can see it there on the list. There's two tons of s solid methane right there. Um, we'll probably replace that with a metal tile. You know what? We might want to do that now. We're going to lose some methane when we do this. Actually, you know what? We can do this the smart way. This is what you... If you want to replace a, uh, a tile that's touching water or gas without it escaping out the other side, all you do is you put a brick there and then you replace the tile diagonally that you want to replace. So we'll just replace this with a metal tile. Say we'll make it out of gold. And done. That should mean that when that tile gets replaced, it won't actually interfere with anything and... I want to make sure we can keep scanning the planets. Yoda, you, you're not going to see anything through that. Your visibility is going to be what? You know what? Reduced visibility, 45%. It, never mind, you'll, you'll have it all back in a second. Well, you're not going to get a huge amount. You're, you're trapped inside a rocket silo, so your, your view of the sky will be a little limited. Just a tad, just a tad. Uh, down here, we are going to get put in our steam turbine for bleeding heat out of this area in here. There we go. We've sealed in this steam turbine, which is providing us with our liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, which is currently... It should be running pretty flat out right about now. But we haven't let any of our hydrogen back up, so it seems to be working this system so far. Though I might want to take that disconnect our hydrogen generators. You know, I think we're going to do that now. Yeah, I think that might be the best idea. There's no point wasting any more hydrogen on these hydrogen generators. We can dump all of that right back into our system. Uh, yeah, that'll do. We'll dump all the excess back in. Any hydrogen that's already made it to the generators can be used. Uh, for the natural gas over here, I think we're going to take a slightly different approach. We're going to have uh, this natural gas from up here. This is going to be sort of our emergency natural gas. Any natural gas from down here from our oil well, that will immediately be dumped into this tank and then disposed of if it gets too full. So if the tank gets too full, then we'll make sure we'll burn it off so that this won't uh, overpressurize. Actually, I don't think that can overpressurize. Mm. Probably get rid of it altogether, but no, no, no. We're going to put in at least an overflow system. I don't want to take too much of advantage of the infinite gas pressure. Over here we will, though. When that eventually pops, the... Uh, oh, wait, has it popped? Oh, yeah, it has popped. It's up to 427 kilos of natural gas pressure in there. Nice. That is a very nice storage tank right there for our natural gas. Anyway, uh, no, we're getting distracted. We need to put in a heat deletion solution here for when we start launching our rockets out of here. Oh, and how is our star map looking? Wow, hey, we found the shattered planet, we have found a carbon asteroid, and we have found a s organic mass. You know what, I think, I think I'll knock out a few more of these before we rip out the uh, the telescope. Just, we, we might as well, we've got the time. Now let's, uh, let's deconstruct this. This is not my smartest solution, I really wish I had two tiles of space to suck steam in here, it would be more efficient, but unfortunately we just don't have the space. Sort of a common theme of this map, you never have the space for anything. Yeah, we're also going to put in a quick layer of super coolant here. How much did that drop off? You know what? We'll make it. That is probably about enough there. Perfect. Yeah, we'll get rid of the rest of that. But that layer of super coolant is going to be... is not going to provide the direct cooling. It's going to be... We're going to run a cooling loop through here. And that cooling loop is going to draw its cooling from the layer of super coolant down here. That is cooling this steam turbine. Which is drawing its cooling from the aqua tuner that is... <laughs> that is cooling down the uh, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen down here. Because, yes, that, that's exactly how we're running this. Um, have I drawn too much oxygen again yet? No, I think we're good. Any uh, excess hydrogen that passes through our suits but is no longer needed gets uh, sent down here and over to our liquid oxygen production. 
We're at 340 kilos. Once we hit about 500 kilos, I should hopefully be able to show you how this automatically stops without any intervention from us. Getting this to work with so little control, as in, you know, we don't really have any way of turning this off or on. We just sort of dump oxygen in and then hopefully it gets to that point and shuts itself off, assuming nothing goes horribly wrong. Anyway, no, no, let's not get distracted. Let's finish this off so we have some way of disposing of steam. Uh, the output pipe from this is not going to go down there. It's going to get dumped off to the side and back into the steam silo. For, well, semi-obvious reasons. Uh, let's uh, get this finished. Okay, after a little bit of scrambling about, we've got super coolant now flowing through here. It's slowly picking up some chill. Uh, we should probably seal this off a little bit better. Though I don't want to seal this off too much. Uh, the reason being, we do want steam to be able to get in and out of there. I'd really wish we had more space, but fortunately we don't. That one tile wide is all we're going to get. It should hopefully, though, help keep the steam term the, the steam in here low enough that it won't, well, boil this door. We, we might have to do some modifications later on, but we'll worry about that then. How are we looking on planets? Oh, all right. We've got a terrestrial planet out here. Well, we can get some blossom seeds if you need them and some fry eggs. But yeah, nothing really too important. I think we'll get one or two more, and then we'll start putting in our new research rocket. All done. Just... Perfect. Well, I would like to say it's perfect, but it still feels like a slight compromise. Sort of a suitable thing for this map. And, oh, oh, damn it, it finished and I never caught it. All right, um, you'll see here this is at 10 kilos of oxygen per second, or 10 kilos of oxygen, liquid oxygen up here, and that's touching the temperature sensor. And this sort of causes a bridge between this window tile and this liquid down here. It just means that if, mm, if I have this temperature sensor, say, up there, what will happen is the liquids will catch up to here, but then the temperature sensor will be in vacuum and those doors would close and it cause a horrible problem. So you absolutely have to have the temperature sensor at a point where it's going to end up in some sort of transfer medium like liquid so that it's going to sense the temperature. At the same time, because it's 10 kilos of pressure, it overpressurizes this vent so no more oxygen can get through. Look, we've got a backup of oxygen. However, since we went ahead and let's get minerals up and made the backing plate in that insulated gas pipe, the temperature of the gas in there can't go below its freezing point, which means it can't freeze in the pipe and give us any damage. Uh, what's the temperature of the oxygen here? Yeah, the oxygen here is also fine. So this should, in theory, never cause any problems, and it doesn't really require us to do any... Well, it's tiny. It's the tiniest thing I could make. In fact, if you check this out here, this is six tiles, three, two by three, so you can fit a liquid tank right in there. Uh, say one of these. It's basically the size of a liquid reservoir, plus the return vent there for rotating liquids. It's as small as you can possibly... Well, I could figure out how to make If you could make a more mini one, please do so. Uh, but I wanted a liquid pump. The reason I wanted a liquid pump is so that we could store... Well, so that it could pump 10 kilos of liquid per second, so you could refuel a rocket rapidly. If you use a mini liquid pump, you can only pump out one kilo per second. Which is fine, then you think, wait, well, I'll cut pump out one kilo per second and I'll stick it in a liquid storage tank. But if you're using a liquid storage tank, then you're already using that much space already, so why not just cut out the middleman and put in a large liquid pump and use the area around it for storage? Well, that was my thinking when I designed it. Ooh, and how are we looking on hydrogen? The hydrogen has actually cleaned all the way out. Perfect. We can then put that up there. Yeah, we'll get the last of the hydrogen out. Okay, uh, planets-wise, how are we looking? You almost finished? Damn, Yoda's fast. All right, all of that is scrubbed out. All we do now is we're going to stick in our new research rocket. Hydrogen it is, you. Okay, right about there. Perfect. So we stick in the hydrogen rocket. We're going to need two modules, one for the liquid oxygen, one for the liquid hydrogen. Then I think it's four research modules and a capsule. This is going to take a little time. And oh, yeah, that's... You know what? Maybe we should disconnect this. That might be an idea. I don't want the doors opening and closing all the time. So just for now, we'll let the doors close. Oh, wait. That's the wrong place to disconnect it. There, that's the right place to disconnect it. I'll cut it back up again. Boom. Yeah, yeah, you can leave your regolith up there until we're ready to demolish it with our hydrogen engine. Oh, and while this is all going on, I should point out, yes, we are... We are running out of power. We are definitely... This liquid storage tank of magma has been powering our base for about 400 cycles. Well... 350 or something cycles. It's been doing it a long time, and it has served us very, very well. Uh, at the same time, I've demolished one of the trees over here because we were chucking in that hydrogen vent, so we're going to be running a little bit short on wood, on lumber, so we're not producing as much dirt as we used to be. However, we don't really need it. We were up to 25 tons of dirt, so I don't think we really need to care anymore. Also, 
Yeah, I think we're going to switch these back to Bristle Blossoms and we're going to get rid of the Draco. Just a few of the side things that have been going on. Also, we put in an overflow over here. Uh, all the polluted water that doesn't get recycled immediately gets dumped into this liquid tank here where it gets stored up and dumped into reed fiber so we can get ourselves more reed fiber. Just the more reed fiber, the better right now. Any excess, excess polluted water goes through here and gets dumped into these liquid reservoirs where we eventually deconstruct them to get polluted oxygen to get more clay. Any excess, excess, excess polluted water will then get dumped into space to disappear. I, I think that's a good way to use our polluted water reserves. Oh, and our food is back on track, thankfully. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's finish off this hydrogen rocket anyway. And there is our completed hydrogen rocket, and ooh, just to grab whatever's going on here. We'll take three tons of coal. I will take it. That should allow us to make some more uh, ceramics if we need them. Hey, this is... Hey, what's happening there? I thought I saw chunks forming. Oop. Yep, the gas is touching off that. Eh, never mind. It seems to be melting, so I'm not going to worry about it. Hey, uh, here's the piping. The p pump will... Dump it out here, bring it around, dump it through the oxygen tank, and any excess can get dumped right back in here. And there's our on switches that we put in. Now, I've set these to 536 kilos. That will allow this rocket to get to its uh, destination. So let's turn this on. Let's see how this works, just for the oxygen first. So it should just go all the way around and start filling up the tank. Once the tank is full, the excess will just start going beyond and we can turn off the pumps. Normally, I wouldn't go with a, si a, a system where you have to turn things on and off. I'd automate the whole thing, but... We've got really cramped conditions right here. We don't we don't have the room to be doing massive automated rocketry programs. Are you almost done? You should be. Yeah, 536. And now it's rotating all the way around, so we disable that. And boom, all the liquid gets dumped right back in, and we've got fresh oxygen being dumped in as well. So the system should just then go back up to exactly where it was over time. Hydrogen-wise, we don't have the exact same amount of liquid, but... It's the same story. We pump it out, it goes into the tank, it goes up to 536 kilos. Boom, any excess will rotate around and go back in and we should be good to go. Uh, I've got Fennec, skill scrub them and given them, where's your hat? I forgot your hat. Damn it, rocket navigation, perfect. Uh, we'll put Fennec back in the shift. Where's Grief Karga? Wait a minute, did I? Already have someone? Yeah, I did, didn't I? Ah, that was silly of me. Now I have two rocketry and two rocket people. You know what? We'll, we'll, we'll send grief into the ship. It's fine. We'll, we'll send Fennec back to get scrubbed again. My bad. My bad. Uh, so grief's back in the ship. How are we looking on hydrogen? Hydrogen's done. We can turn off the hydrogen. Uh, has that rotating around? Boom. All right, and now we have a fully prepared hydrogen rocket. Well, we better give it a name. Say hello to the Razor Crest. That's what we're going to call it because, you know, we're going with the Mandalorian theme. Uh, so this is the closest planet we've got that we can... Oh, that hasn't got any uh, research we can get. Why do I have the option to go further? I shouldn't. Why is it allowing me to choose? Never mind. Just on the wrong screen. Uh, so these are the two planets we have to choose from. We've already researched everything out as far as here. Uh, the whole goal... Oh, yeah, I can't launch it because the doors are closed, can I? Uh, another thing that was told to me is I could just disable auto-repair on this. It'll get shredded, but it will still be there when we come back. Uh, a piece of advice was... Oh, no. Yeah, leave that there. It'll get shredded, but uh, it was the research. When it comes to the research here, all we need to do is knock out this one here. Once we've knocked out this one here, we can then research the basic and advanced research for this. The, the interstellar research, we don't really care about. Well, okay, we will get around to it eventually. But once we've got rid of the novice and the advanced research, we can destroy those buildings. We can deconstruct them, claiming the space back. And since we don't need the dirt anymore, we can get rid of the ethanol distillery and the arbor trees and a whole bunch of these composts. In other words, our life gets an awful lot simpler. We have far more space to work with, which is the really big problem on this map. Uh, are you going to take off? Why is your launch path blocked? Oh, it, one second. It might actually be that regolith as opposed to the uh, the gantry that's stopping it. Come on, come on. There we go. Launch away. Yeah, how much heat are we going to get out of that? Way too much. Oh, whoa. I think we melted a bunch of stuff, did we? I saw a bunch of things just sort of fall down there. Is that liquid gold? Yep. Uh, yep. Time to check power wires. Uh, power wires are fine. Uh, automation wires. Nope. 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 You know what? We will grab these and we're immediately going to close that up. We're also going to set this to the Razor Crest so it opens the doors when it comes back. 
uh, we will close those doors. And this is lost power. So, yes, power wire over here melted. Ah, made of gold. That is my bad. We will make those out of steel. That would be far, far smarter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I messed up a few of those. Anyway, no, that will work. That will work. How's the temperature in here? 500 C, 700. Shh, okay. It's a little bit warm. A little bit warm. Not going to lie. That's looking a bit toasty. How's our door over here? The door is actually pretty chill. Uh, I've put a temperature shift plate right here. The whole point of this temperature shift plate is to rip heat out of the naphtha to prevent the naphtha flashing to steam. How is this doing? Not very well. I don't think the airflow is good into there, is it? Yeah. The steam pressure is just too low, so we're not able to actually get an awful lot of processing through there. Maybe if we enlarge this slightly. If we can construct these two blocks, we might be able to increase steam flow in there. Oof. What a mess. That is just... That is way too hot. Way, way, way too hot. As a bit of a trick to help us out, what I did was I installed a gas pump down here. Thermium gas pump, and it's going to pump steam all the way up here and right below the steam turbine. If I'd have been thinking ahead, I would have tucked it in there, but I can't really get in there now due to just the way things are built. But, you know, we, we could maybe fix that later. But that's getting us at least, well, a bunch of the steam being destroyed, or at least a bunch of the heat being destroyed. Slowly the temperature in here is dropping as more and more steam gets turned, gets dumped through it. Once we're below 500 degrees, I don't care, because that's the temperature the naphtha flashes at, whereas at uh, 538. That just means this place is not an unholy, just super boiling mess. Now, now that that is done, we're going to knock out the last of the research. That research rocket should be back when? Uh, oh, nine cycles. Okay, I should probably find something else to do while that's going on. And I'm thinking it's going to be... Yeah, we're going to have to consolidate all this magma back up again and maybe move this. This is going to have to be moved at some point because we want to put in our... Um, ah, our sour gas boiler is going to go in here, so this will have to be moved. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for an intermediate power source. I might have to just not run a huge amount of power and... Oh, what the... That should be happening. Why is that instantly solidifying? You, uh... Stop turning everything solid. <laughs> right, so it looks like we've run into a problem. Are we getting the same on the other side? Yes, we are. That's 847 kilos of that. So let's uh, open the doors. Yeah, I'm going to have to think, find out what's happening here. All right, I'm not sure exactly what happened there. I think what happened was the liquid vent was so cold, it was causing... It was causing the the gas that came out of here to instantly solidify and this was causing all sorts of complications. But once I just kept the door open for a little bit, it reset. So I'm going to have to be more careful with that. Uh, over here, we only have 7 grams of solidified hydrogen, so I think we're safe. I've just set it back to normal and it seems to be just yeah, doing its thing. Alright, we'll keep an eye on that and see what happens. Uh, Temperature-wise, in here, the steam temperature at the bottom has actually gone down to 150. And some of that water is actually sticking around for a while. I think our best bet here is to stick in a temperature shift blade or two. And that should help spread out the heat, make sure that water turns instantly back to steam and goes back up to the top to get turned right back into more power. I can't really seal in the top up here too well. I suppose we could put in some drywall to stop the steam escaping and then just infinitely recycle it. Hmm, you know what? I do like that idea. Give me some igneous rock here. Eh. There. That should mean we should be able to keep the steam in here, keep recycling it for power. That power only feeds, unfortunately, into this grid. But I'm okay with that. If it uh, turns out it's useful, we can always find more uses for it. Okay, then. While that's going on, yeah, I need to find out something to do with this magma. Before I get started on that, I think we're going to have a, a quick analysis of this hydrogen vent while it's dormant. Just so that we can figure out what we're dealing with here. Otherwise, I won't know when it's on or off or not. It's not a big, the biggest deal, but I would like to... Uh, see, we're still getting the odd pieces of solid hydrogen collecting in here. Though, once a little bit more hydrogen comes in, it seems to wipe it out. Uh, you know what? I will worry about it later. We'll finish this off. Oh, we are actually finished. Perfect. Next activity cycle, 7.2. Okay, maybe we should uh, get around to fixing that right now. Right. We'll close that up, and then I believe... Ooh, well, that's a mistake. Let's for that. Yeah, I believe I've got this in so that we can now vacuum this area out. If the temperature's below... Yeah, we can empty out this whole area before the it activates again. There we go. New fresh vacuum. You can be set to, if it's above 500, no, 500 grams, here to activate. And then we'll, we'll plug you right back into the grid over here. There you go. 
Uh, get rid of you. And boom, problem solved. Oh, oh, get rid of you. And uh, what I was thinking down here is I think we'll just compress this all up and then we'll free up this space over here so we can come down from the top and just make it part of our base. Yeah, I think I'm just going to have to leave this here until we've gone through all of this magma. I want all this igni I want all this magma turned into igneous rock. So we can wait. We can wait and we can knock out our research and get ourselves some more space resources before we build our second silo. Plus, once we've got once we've got our uh, research knocked out, we can then well, we can rip out a bunch of this stuff that we don't need anymore. And once we can rip that stuff out, we'll have space to move all of our bedrooms across and everything like that. And we can squeeze everything from here to here. That will be sort of our living area around there. Yeah, but let me get started on this magma moving. Yeah, this is this is going to take a little while, isn't it? Maybe I should add some more bottle emptiers. Uh, our rocket is about to come back, and I thought I would just have a quick run over what's happened in the, the silo. In the silo, the temperatures now are actually... Okay, they're not super chill or anything, but 160 to 190. It gets a little bit warmer up near the top because, well, we're, the steam is sort of... It gets up here, it gets recycled, it gets dropped down to the bottom where it's heavily cooled, and then it gets pumped right back up again and right back in. The only downside is there's a few little blobs of oxygen right in there, and it's really annoying because it, we can't really get full access to the steam turbine. But it's fine, it's fine. Not going to worry about it. Now, when we do open up the silo, it does mean a bunch of steam is going to escape. Say, Levy. Oh, yeah, well, Regolith is probably going to do that. It's going to boil all the water. We're going to lose a bunch of steam here, but the rocket was almost returned. Where is it? Yes, yeah, 99%. So I opened the door manually before the... Uh, before the ah, now the space scanner's detected it, and that would have been way too late, space scanner. Are we looking on everything else? Yeah. And we're landed. You know what? I'm gonna call that a success. Did anything explode? Oh, how do we have molten gold down here again? What did we break this time? Uh, we didn't melt these pipes. These pipes broke the last time and destroyed the sewage system, which was a problem. The power overlay... Uh, I don't think anything burnt out. No, I think we're good. I think we're good. Everything's, everything's still functioning. Uh, Gas-wise... Yep, yeah, nope, everything's still golden. All right, let's see Let's see what kind of research we got back on that one. Uh, isoresin, yes. Okay, we might actually go back there. Uh, the whole thing's cargo-based, so we'll only get 8% isoresin, but that might be worthwhile. No, 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 we're going to go and research this place next. Uh, once we get our research modules out of there, we can start... Where is it? Yeah, we need our virtual planetarium up and running. That's an extra 200 points of research. That will get us most of the way towards liquid and gas cargo. So let's refuel this sucker up and launch it again. Before I launch this a second time, I think I'm going to let it, it just chill. Chill for a while. You know, the, the temperatures are dropping slowly down here and it's slowly migrating its way up closer and closer to the top. This area here was getting too hot. It actually got so hot it started to boil the water in the sink. So I had to remove the temperature shift plate. I think we'll just take a moment and we'll finish off this little magma compression down here. Uh, at the same time, we finally get rid of this glass. There's a piece of molten glass that ended up in here. And that was because a piece of polluted water fell into the magma biome got boiled, the dirt that came out of it got melted, turned into sand, which then melted into glass, which we are now going to dump into here. Which I have been waiting to do for a long time. That has been making that place look terribly dirty for so long. Uh, how are we looking here on temperature? You know what? I don't care. We're going to throw in a few blobs of molten glass. So now I have to set this to uh, extract glass as well. Actually, that was that was really simple. Uh, that's that gone. Unfortunately, as we've realized before, you can't mop this up. Now, I was going to get a sweepy in here, but I think... Hmm. You know, if I deconstruct those obsidian chunks, that's probably going to cause all of that to solidify. We might just have to go with another sweepy. You know what? Yeah, we haven't had a sweepy in a while. Let's get one down here to mop this place up. <laughs> oh, damn it. I let the sweepy get made out of copper. We now have liquid copper. <laughs> all right, so you have to make sure that what gets delivered is going to be able to survive the temperatures. Uh, tungsten. Tungsten can survive it. Well, that, that create one? No, we're going to need something else. What have you got? You are bringing along niobium. Wow, we're going to make a sweepy out of niobium? Um, no. Just, just, nope, you're not allowed to do that. Nope, just, you will go all the way over there. You're going to drop that niobium down. You are bringing us tungsten. Oh, seriously, people? What is wrong with you? There needs to be some way to set this to only use steel or something like that. I'd forgotten how annoying this was. Just to, just give me a couple of minutes. We have a sweepy made out of tungsten. They've got a very high melting point. They'll be fine. They'll collect our magma. How's this looking over here? You are just about getting enough magma. Now, once this is swept up, we can work that in here, and we'll have all of this space to add to our base. 
Oh, that's going to be so much nicer. I have, I, I'm not even sure what I want to put in there just yet. We've been working on such a minimal amount of space. Well, Sweepy has done an excellent job. The whole place is nice and clean. Unfortunately, that means Sweepy's purpose has come to an end. Uh, therefore, we're going to brick this area in. Bye-bye, Sweepy. That is kind of mean, but uh, we at least we get our metals back. We'll put that up like that. Then we can just expose this area to the rest of our base. There'll be a few hot pieces in here, but it should be fine. Well, I hope it is. All right, now we have our much smaller storage tank. I might have been able to save extra... You know, no, we've saved as much blocks as we needed to. Uh, time to open the sucker up to the rest of the base. Yo, let's just don't cook everything, if you could please not do that. Ugh, you, no, it's fine, it's fine. Everyone's in Atmos suits, so it'll be grand, it will be grand. All right, more space for the base. Now, over here, I've made a few minor modifications. And this over here, we're going to do some little bit of changes. That liquid vent can go. Instead of dumping the water down to the very bottom, which we've been doing, I'm going to dump it down on that exact tile right there. That gives me a utility temperature shift plate tile. This should provide cooling right beside the door, which should hopefully prevent all that heat leaking into our base as much as it's been doing. How are you doing? Ah, man, that should start dropping the temperature of that rather rapidly. So as opposed to having this area down here being really cool, it should be this area up here that gets the most cooling. All right, way, way too far out of time. The time just flies. Um, I have replaced this with steel. I was worried that that gold was going to melt in one of our uh, future rocket launches, and then we'd, we would vent an enormous amount of natural gas. So no, I have uh, replaced that with steel. At the same time, where is it? Uh, Temperature-wise, you can't really tell from this temperature overlay. The temperature overlay is not great once you go above about 100 degrees, but it's 150 C or 140 C around here, which has dragged down the temperature of this door, which means our, our naphtha lock is not causing so much problems anymore. At the same time, yeah, it's it's a lot hotter down at these other places. It's just exactly where that uh, the water is venting out of the steam turbine is definitely cooling that, giving some good spot cooling, let's call it. Uh, the top of it here is about two, 300 degrees, or it's a lot hotter in other locations, let's just say. Now, with this, with all of this extra space to work with, you know what reminds me, get rid of all of that. Don't need any of it. You can all go. There's a whole bunch of junk we can get rid of in here, but it, it's not important. I can do that off screen. What is important is we've got a whole bunch of extra space to work with. And once this magma is emptied, I think, yeah, once this magma is emptied, I might even start burning it a little bit faster than normal. We'll, uh, we'll have to install the sour gas boiler, but that's going to leave us in a precarious position. That precarious position is going to be because we don't have, um, well, we don't have an alternative power supply to keep us going. I might have to install even more manual generators just to tide us over that little bit. Natural gas will keep us going for quite a bit. We have quite a lot of it to draw, and we might actually double down on the natural gas for the time being and rely on the about two tons of the stuff we have as backup. That might be what tides us over. But before I, I, I blather on too much, I think we'll, we'll cut this out here. Oh, oh yes, the, the update. There's an update coming out for the game, or DLC. I'm, I'm only going to have a quick look at this because it, it's not really, there's not enough content here for a whole video, but it's more a case of they're introducing a bunch of new critters, they're introducing uh, oh, nuclear power, it seems, and they're also introducing multi-planetary asteroids. You can set up colonies on other asteroids. That is, that's that's all I want. Just Just allow me to have multiple colonies and... You know, specialized colonies where you might have one that's a farm, you might have one that's a mine. I, I don't know. There, there's there's a lot of opportunities there. Also, they seem to be changing the space grid. So as opposed to just the, the rings, you're going to have to travel distances. Now, my only hope here, it's, it's to do with the nuclear power. I'm hoping that the nuclear power is for nuclear rockets. Um, as in hooking up the rockets with some sort of nuclear power source so that they can travel further. So you don't have to keep refueling them as often. That would be my big hope. But you know, that, that, there's there's loads that's going to be in the DLC, but we've no idea when it's coming out. It's sometime this year, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I hope they give us a, 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 like a release date at some point, and then I can maybe book some time off, because I'm going to want a few days just to, to burn through it. Anyway, uh, that will be the end of today's episode. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, good luck. <laughs>